Um, I'm not going to forgive myself for being in gear like this because you arrive and work where I cycle to and from. So there we are. We normally wear suits when I see patients. <laughs> First of all, just to reiterate um, what Lloyd has said outside, this is, this is your evening. You're here to get from us what it is you want. And obviously, if you've got things you know you want to talk about, mm -hmm. interesting cases, what it is I do, um, you please go ahead. Um, it's always difficult. So what I've decided to do instead is is perhaps give you a flavour of what it is that I see here, um, because you know not everyone quite understands the role of pain consultant working with a group of orthopods, where the clients come from. Obviously, I get <coughs> some from physiotherapists. I get a lot from GPs as well. So what I've got on the table here is a typical example of a young lady with sacroiliac joint issues. Another one with an interesting forefoot synovitis and fracture. Somebody else who is typical post-spinal surgery pain management. So that's the more acute pain management thing. And I've got another one, again, on somebody who presents with a quite obscure myofascial sort of muscle pain in his pec area. So that, that's, that's what I've got on the cards for you, as well as an MRI scan, which I managed to find. Anyway, so could I stop? <clears throat> is there anything, are there any things that you, in cases, would like to discuss with me? Uh, well, I just thought, you know, do you have this case of ma uh, mix of neuropathic pain with musculoskeletal pain? So we, we tend to think it's just perhaps musculoskeletal, but I would like to know uh, if any sort of medication could be combined with the physio treatment to achieve a better result. Okay. So if... <clears throat> I think I think I think that's 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 a very valid and real question. Um, I think increasingly we are aware that we previously thought that most pain was simply nociceptive and inflammatory pain in the past related to inflammation and just simple C and D fibers. We now know that during any prolonged illness, injury, nerve damage, particularly in the spine. Um, there is often nerves which get caught up in the pathology. And I'm not talking about <clears throat> typical cases of neuropathic pain such as diabe diabe you know, diabetic neuropathy or PHN. Those are pure neu neuropathic cases, right? Mm. But you're right, the ones that present to you with a sort of mixed picture. I think what's key to your <clears throat> how you would assess this is to ask yourself, you can ask some of the, 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 the characteristic features of neuropathic pain. <clears throat> Would be tingling, bits of numbness, shooting pain, patchy skin sensation. Mm. Though Those might give you clues as to the nature of the pain, or spontaneous pain as well. And pain that doesn't change much from rest to movement. So it's almost mm. a, a, a steady and spontaneous type pain. Whereas a lot of the more mechanical and inflammatory pain will be worse when you move it or touch it and things like that, whereas the neuropathic pain is often worse at night. In terms of managing it, I think recognising it is a great thing to do. Mm. And so, sort of saying to yourself, you've probably got some neuropathic pain as well. In strict, strictly acute setting, when somebody, let's say, has an injury and recovers without complication, you're unlikely to develop neuropathic pain afterwards. But even with a straightforward mechanical back pain, which you feel is mostly muscular, after a while, the nerves within that area change. And there are subtle features of, of neuropathy. Yeah. So there's a big, I think, certainly myself and my colleague, Dr. Althwaite, we tend to use anti-neuropathics. We titrate drugs in and out of patients' regimes just to see how they respond, because very often they find those are more effective at managing that aspect of their pain. So we often combine meds to try and achieve the best. <clears throat> and of course, the good thing about using antineuropathics is, is that their normal pain signaling system is untouched. So in other words, if it's a new pain, mm -hmm. say you're introducing a new exercise that hurts, it's not going to mask it. All, right? All it does, it dampens down the nerves from excessively firing. So they still fire, so normal C fibers and D fibers which carry the pain will still be felt, but you won't get the same excessive uh, electrical activity.
Correct. Uh-huh. Now, you, do you, I think you asked about combining these meds. No, I ask, for example, just as an example, you get this person with uh, clinical signs of tennis elbow, yep. but there is also some uh, uh, clinical signs of neuropathic pain. So then you know you can't be treating the tennis elbow, but the neuropathic pain will continue being there. So then I wonder if the combination of the medication to uh, calm down the neuropathic pain that perhaps uh, we cannot do much. <coughs> and then treating ourselves the musculoskeletal pain, if the combination would be good and what you think. Yeah. Well, very often if, if you, if we're able to modify and control the pain pathway better, mm-hmm. then we normally see a quicker recovery. Mm-hmm. All right. You're right. Tennis elbow can be very, very difficult to manage because it lasts so long. And neuropathic pain drugs work. However, and I will say however, mm-hmm. if you, if I were to request that a GP prescribe these for tennis elbow, they will say this is not on our formulary. This is not on our, you know, prescribers. This this is not a listed condition for us mm-hmm. to use it with. So we <clears throat> we are seeing the, the widespread use of these agents, but they're not yet. It takes a while before they become mainstream. All right. So we acknowledge that they work, and we see that they're very effective, and we like to use them. But very often, patients may have to pay for them themselves. And of course, Lyrica, which is pregabalin, is quite expensive. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. They come with back pain, hmm. and uh, when is it? It is not related to back. Hmm. That's an interesting question. <coughs> because there are so many illnesses listed. Correct. And in the end it says back pain. Mm. It ends with back pain as exactly. well. Exactly, exactly. I think back pain, first of all, is, is, is a lot more complex than we understand. Mm-hmm. Um, we like things to present in you know nice, easy ways. OA hips, quite easy, you know, chondromalacia, patella. You know, there are certain entities that we understand well. But I think this vague back pain is, is incredibly multifactorial in terms of its origins. I think system... <clears throat> we, we, we develop systems of... trying to our best to diagnose. And very often it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Um when a patient presents with a new back pain problem here, I th- for me it's very important that their pain referral pattern fits into a back pain. So using the headline of pain, I then work backwards to different areas. Could it be the hip? Could it be the SIJ? Does it sound like it's more discogenic in terms of the way they describe it? Does it behave like discogenic pain? Does it behave like facet joint pain? Is there a large muscular component to it? Is there a lot of muscle spasm? And so I I explore each one of these avenues and try and build up a composite picture of what's the problem. And then from that, I look at how the pain interferes with their life. So even if I don't necessarily find a diagnosis to hang or uh, put a label on it, I can still get a very good picture of what the patient has to live with every day and how they manage their lives. You know, sometimes I'm dealing with elite athletes and sometimes I'm dealing with people in deskbound jobs, but all of them are affected in some way. <coughs> Establishing quite where it comes from is the tricky bit. Mm. Our scans obviously brilliant. Um, at at helping us but if your scan for example I request a normal lumbar sequence or series it comes back and I just got one back today actually <coughs> excuse me um, where the reporting radiologist said and, and on, on the request form I said intermittent neuropathic pain down right leg and I was querying the spine as being a cause and the report came back and said, the spine's okay, but have you considered another scan looking at the SIJs? So a simple request like that suddenly op- opens into a different area altogether. 
So here's somebody who's suggesting that there is possibly something around the sciatic nerve which may, may be picked up on a separate type film. So yes, when it comes to back pain, it is incredibly complex. But what I find more complex is the overlap. The overlap from the thoracolumbar fascia through to the SIJs, through to hip problems which often present yeah. as you know sometimes they they simply lock up sometimes you've you've you you end up with sort of tendinopathies here which refer this way the piriformis spasms they've got intermittent leg pain that is billed as sciatica so it's important obviously listen carefully for what they say and i i examine everyone and when i examine them i normally lumbar spine core hips SIJs and lower limb neurology so that's just for a simple back pain that's what they will get um, it may sound just like I don't know what I'm talking about but in terms of the, as a physiotherapist when are you the person to go to is it, you were talking about like, the way pain could present and I do my own assessment that it's you know go down in McKenzie or whatever route I go down and I kind of narrow down what I think you know I've got different options I can take it to I mean when is the moment when I go a pain specialist might be the, the first stop that's a, t- that's a tough call for you isn't it yeah. because you know you, you, you you're trained to <clears throat> assess put a treatment program together um, and you know get patients well and I think by and large that is what you successfully do most of the time and I guess probably with 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 experience because you you look quite young <laughs> is you, you they, they they there will come times that you just know that that patient's not not quite getting there, not quite getting it, or comes in with new pains that that present and inhibit their whatever whatever because a lot of what you do will be there'll be some hands on some tissue release and, and a lot of exercise I, I would imagine and so if you've got somebody who's two steps forward five steps back three steps forward five steps back and just you're not winning you don't suspect there's anything significant going on let's face it spinal surgeons are wonderful people who do great jobs but if you look at what they do before they actually operate it's what you do it's the advice the exercise the anti-neuropathics it's the injections so a long way before surgery and the MRI scans will tell us what's going on so you know very often a patient wants reassurance from a scan and I don't blame them I think I would want reassurance from a scan it, it MRI scans certainly in private sector have become the gold standard for most patients it's what they expect and you know I wouldn't ex- even 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 a patient who I don't suspect there's anything going wrong with their back, that the value of giving them a negative scan can help them re-engage in physio a lot. So if, if a patient, say for example, the back of their mind is, is thinks, okay, my physio hurts a bit, I've been doing the exercises, I'm not quite right. You clinically don't think there's anything suspicious or seriously wrong. Sometimes by sending them to someone, I'm not saying just to me, but sending them to someone where they get a scan, the value of a negative scan can actually help them to think, well, I'm actually okay. I can do this physio. And they can do it. All right. Our time is up. Your time is up. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mark. We Thank heard it. Absolutely. It works. Brilliant. <laughs> All right. Okay. See ya. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thank you. My pleasure. If you like this video, click here to subscribe or join us on Twitter or Facebook.